everyone, welcome back to the Curious Shelf. You're joining me on a It's Drizzly, It's Cold, It's Grey, It's Brussels. <laughs> You're joining me on a Saturday evening in Brussels. I'm glad to have you all here. So welcome to new subscribers and welcome back to those who already know me. This is a VR to Kyra Gretchel because she did a fantastic tag called Living in the Tarot. Now, um, I saw the tag from Carrie, who is Tierra, Princess of Wands, her response to it. So I'm piggybacking off that, and then I watched Kyra's um, original vi video, post both below. Um, I thought it was a great tag. Um, I really, really wanted to do it, and then my initial response was, I was like, yes, like living in the tarot, this is me. This is, this is like one of the primary reasons why I have so many decks and why I love tarot decks, because they just fire up my imagination, right? And then I kind of like went into my shelf, and the initial video that I did, I pulled nearly every deck off the shelf. I kid you not, there was like 20 decks on my table. And then I was kind of like trying to compete of what to show. And then I was over, yeah, like my video was really long and then it wouldn't upload properly. And I thought that's a sign that this is not the right video. So this is take two. Um, I'm gonna put a nuance on it, which is living in the tarot, autumn spooky edition because I would like to just do this again, maybe in a few months time. Like I said, I have so many decks that fall into this category. So just so you know, I really pared it down. I decided there would be five decks in total. I'm trying to count as I look at them, it's like there's five decks. Um, five decks in total. And yeah, so here we go. Um, you have seen many of these, but I'm going to, I said five and I just realized it's not five, it's, it's six because there's one more that I need to add, and it's hidden here. So it's six, it's five plus one bonanza. So it's two minutes in, and let's begin with the first deck. The first deck is none other than my Everyday Witch. This is such a good back to school deck. When I see the Everyday Witch, I think of a witch going to school, which really just reminds me of me. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, this is a great deck. The author is Deborah Blake, the artist is Elizabeth Alba, both Deborah Blake and Elizabeth Alba are producing um, separately decks. <laughs> that sounds weird. They're both currently producing um, another tarot deck each. So not with each other as partners, but now with other creators. I sound so weird right now. <laughs> Sorry, I hope that makes sense. I know one of them is an owl deck by Deborah Blake, I think it is. And I think it's Elizabeth Alba who's doing a cat deck which i think is a spin-off of this one i could have got them mixed up and it could be the other way around but there's an owl deck and there's a cat deck coming out i'm very happy they're llewellyn decks i love llewellyn decks so what better way to start off this whole tag than with a llewellyn deck these are the backs these are the images you have seen this deck on my channel like a gazillion times i love it one of the reasons why i love it is because i can imagine myself as the everyday witch so when a deck allows me to do that, I'm very happy with that. I love how this is very cute. It reminds me of just storybooks when I was growing up and reading or from my imagination. As you all know, I'm a big fan of The Worst Witch, the books um, with Maud and Mildred. And um, so yeah, so the, these images I absolutely adore. Um, I just find this a really, how can I put it? An um, unthreatening deck. It's friendly. And sometimes in my life, I know I need a friend. And I've said this like lots of times. Sometimes I just, I want a deck to just hold my hand um, through life. You know, when I'm feeling like this and I feel that isolation, I feel left out, something I really do suffer from, um, something that I'm working with. Um, you know, part of my, I don't like to call it shadow I because that just puts it in a category. It's just part of the evolution of who I am and some of the things that I've had to grow into or out of the uh, best way to, I can put it. So this deck is just for me, it allows me to see my emotions, but not in, in a way that I can flow with it and work with it. One of my favorite cards of all time is the Six of Swords from this deck. We might or might not see it. I don't know, I'm going so fast right now, but I absolutely love the Six of Swords because, you know, if, you ever, if you're ever wondering, you know, Google it, or if you've got your deck, you know, you can always look it up. Um, the Six of Swords in this deck is just me, you know, she's on the run, it's not fun, 
she's she's gonna have to figure out it's an adventure basically this is an adventure deck for me and the people that i meet on the adventure i caught i could have quite easily had had the forest of enchantment in this as well they kind of like these two decks for me just like they don't compete but they they run side by side by being decks that i turn to um things when things are just not i don't know how to put it when, when i just need that comfort you know some people call it a hug deck i'm not sure about that or a soul deck or whatever i just need this is it the six of swords one of my favorite cards ever because it just captures the whole moment with the cat on the back and she's running and that's a full moon and yeah because the six of swords energy is traditionally very kind of like these calm you know going from rough waters towards smooth and there's a there's a somber moment and it's almost like you know we've got through the most difficult time and then you have the seven of swords afterwards you're like what's that all about so <laughs> i find the six of swords in this deck much more attuned in tune to how i feel sometimes when i'm making that great escape which is like sometimes it's not so i don't know how to put it poised or you know to you know i'm, I'm not so together like she's running for it basically and i love that and i love the expression of the cat on the back as well Okay, so I'm gonna go on from there, and now, now that I've shown you my, my, one of my favorite decks, basically, which actually a lot of these are my favorite decks, but anyway, I will go on from there and choose another deck, which kind of like, I'm gonna stick to Tarot first, which kind of like competes with the whole autumn, spring. If you're somebody that likes to make sure that they use their decks more than one season, I like to look for like autumn, spring, seasonal interchange because in Europe those two seasons have a lot of similarities basically. Um, so as we go out of the autumn, as we go into the autumn equinox, I forgot to say that happy equinox, I'm going to show you the Hush Tarot. For me, this is a true Scorpio deck. I hear so many people going, oh this is a Scorpio, I'm a Scorpio. This is a Scorpio deck for me because of the fact that it is just death and decay in slow motion. <laughs> so anyway, it's grim, it's dark. I know a lot of people, there's a lot of iffiness with this deck. I understand it. This is pre-existing artwork that has been allocated to the keys. So please don't think that like this doesn't make sense with the key because it doesn't. It really doesn't. It's just kind of like go with it, a flow deck. It is mass market US games. So yes, just to say, there's only one here indie deck, the rest. So the everyday witch is mass market. This is mass market to you. Um, okay, so here, here are the backs, first of all. And here is the deck. And I think that this is a beautiful autumnal deck. I see myself amongst these hues. It's got a very, it's got a very vintage feel to it. I like that it's very jarring. I like the fact that the images look just strange. Um, I was actually going to use my Rackham Tarot, so I think that they both have that very antique Victorian, Edwardian feeling, um, which I absolutely adore. I like the somberness of this deck. I like the sadness of it. Um, I like the sense of betrayal, um, you know, not everything not being as it would seem. I like how power and um, subjugation have this interval, so perpetrator, victim, this whole cycle. I really relate to that as a Scorpio. You know, we're, we're in that transformation interchange all the time. Um, so yeah, um, it's a deck that really just, I like the, you know, here we have the serpent and the florals. And we see that a lot, right, in images with tattoos or whatever with art. But I like how this has been, how this has done it with, a, you know, and um, I just realized this is the nine of cups. I mean, what a nine of cups. Um, so yeah, I like this deck because of its, um, also its relationship between the animals, right? And the, and the fae energy. It took me a while to realize these are fays. I, I was just like, I just, I, I'm just kind of like, I'm one of those people that doesn't see the fae. I just see the energy and I go with it. And I think that's why we, we like fae energy as well. It's just, it takes me. Um, I like, I like this deck, you know, it's, it's sometimes very tough. I feel like it's a deck which if you're not careful it's gonna slice you on the finger you know it's like a paper cut and it, it's, and it hurts and it's deep and yet you don't really see it but it's there and it's like a wound and I think this this deck is is gonna give paper cuts basically it's, it's that kind of deck it's sharp um, but I love it for that reason you know um, 
it, it's a deck that doesn't shy away from now now that they're gone or now that they're dead or now that you're dead what next and um and it looks at that decay you know and it looks at the fear that we sometimes have you know with things coming to us and thoughts and feelings and what's pecking away at me so yes i think this is a fabulous deck it's definitely one of my favorites I use this deck actually more in the spring rather than the autumn, but I think she, I used her a lot in this, this last spring, but I just feel called to put it in this um, video because I do find myself coming home to this deck and living in this deck, you know, which is what the prompts were about. Okay, so after the Hush Tarot, and that's by Jeremy Hush, um, the creator is Jeremy Hush, who I don't know, hopefully I'm... Um, I've actually said, you know, please, please produce an oracle or, or another deck because I'd love to see more um, of his work. Okay, so this is going to be my last tarot deck and then we're going to already move on. Um, and this is an indie deck and I wanted to add it because it just, it just felt right to bring it out. This is the reason why I love this creator. It's James R. Eads and it's his Prisma Visions tarot. I actually was going to use the Light Visions and I chose the Prisma Visions because I feel like the light visions is gonna be my winter living in the tarot. So this is my autumnal, and that's why I pulled it out. This deck could also be kind of like end of summer for me as well. I absolutely adore his artwork. It's, you know, like there's so many people who feel, you know, it, 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 there's keys, but there's also just the art and the, where it sends me in my head. These are the sides. I mean, look at that gilding. These are the backs. This is matte. I don't know, 300 GM cardstock, something like that. I mean, it's, it's thick. It's very, very good quality. Um, it's still in order, this one. I, I like the Prisma Vision. I like, the, sorry, the Light Visions more. So that's the one that gets kind of like, that's the one that comes out to play a lot more. Um, but I really like this deck because it really is a deck where I can imagine myself immersing myself into these images, you know, being... <clears throat> being a wanderer in this story, taking a stroll, entering this world that James R. Eads has created. It truly is an amazing deck, you know, and, um, and I'm really, really glad, you know, that I made that investment. Um, I actually bought the Light Visions, I think. Yeah, the Light Visions first. Then I got this one, and then the last one was the Oracle, um, the Cosmo Visions which to me is actually a tarot deck. And I think that is perfect for um, summer, the Cosmovisions. But this deck is just lovely because of its haunt. I find it's haunting. And I find like when I'm walking through this deck, like I'm meeting these people, I'm like, what are you up to? What are you doing? Um, but I could easily be that person, you know? This is like one of my favorite cards here is the Four of Chalices. I mean, um, and the Four of Chalices in the Light Visions looks a bit different, so I want to point that out. Even though they're meant to be kind of like just optically the same deck with, you know, one's colored, one's black and white, there's a slight variation, and I see it on his face, but he still looks very despondent and alone and sad and pondering. There's this apathy, and yet when you look behind, the sky is just lit with this cosmos, right, that's moving and churning. So you can easily sit there thinking he's missing it. He's missing this wonderful movement of the world going on right behind him because he's looking into that um, into that lake, you know, and he's and so I, I identify with that, you know, I identify with that those feelings. So yeah, I really, really like this deck because I feel like you know the nostalgia is captured so well. I think it was the yeah, it is the five. I want to just show quickly the five of chances. I mean yeah you know the things that we we're looking down at what we're losing and yet we're missing what we have still left for us up here um so yeah it's just a great i uh this is the pentacles i think i'm gonna just skip ahead a little bit here this is a real storybook deck for me and i feel like i feel like when when james R. eads has made this and he sold this deck you know he's made this deck for us or people, I know, persons like myself, you know, I, I feel like it's a gift because I'm seeing his story in these cards. You know, he's he's telling me a story. And he's like, I want to show you how I'm how how I envisage 
this journey. And, um, and I really, really enjoyed that. I really like it when artists are saying, you know, come, come with me and I'm going to show you what happens here. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, and look, the, he or she is free and yet we don't see it. We're right there. We're right at the edge and yet we don't see it. Um, so yeah, and of course, as many of you know, this is one of those decks that when you put it out, you have a panoramic vision of each of the suits and the mages. They actually tell the whole story. So um, if you're looking at an indie investment, I mean, it depends, you know, if the art calls to you as well, of course, um, then I would recommend this deck. The only arc I have, which I think I've mentioned, I've heard somebody else mention too as well, is that the mages have borders whilst the, you know, the miners don't. And sometimes I feel like if he'd made this borderless, you know, but nevertheless, I think it's a beautiful deck and I'm so glad I, you know, I, I, I bought them gingerly one by one thinking because, you know, I just wanted to, you know, I think it was already, I, I think I spent close to with all three together about in US dollars, about 160 US dollars, 60, which for me is, is a lot personally. So I was just like, okay. So anyway, um, let me move on to some oracles for this time of year. Oracle decks that I imagine myself living in the tarot, coming home to the tarot. So the first one is a favorite of mine. And it's a deck that I bought, um, I bought it last year, and that's Stacey DeMarco's The Halloween Oracle. Now, I think that this has got to be one of the best Halloween oracles there is out there. And it's quite under, underestimated, understated. It's a deck people just don't, I think some people have it, but I still think that there's not enough praise. Stacey DeMarco is a great um, writer. Um, this, let me just first check, who is the, who's the artist? Sorry about that. So it says, lifting the veil between the worlds every night, Stacey DeMarco. And who's the artist? Just give me a moment. Card artwork by Jimmy Manton. I am not a huge Jimmy Manton fan, but this time, I love it. So, here we have it, Lifting the Veil. Now, the other thing I just want to say about this particular deck is if you, and these are the backs, is that if you're on the fence because, you know, Halloween is just a month and you're like, you know, do I really just want a, a, a deck for just like a few weeks? This deck is great all the way through winter, I think, anyway, as well. So it's really like that moody, dark energy month. Um, uh, deck, sorry. So I really like the colors used in this deck. I like the ambiance that it sets. I can see myself in some strange way living in these in these um, images. I'm not sure if we need, we need another light now. Sorry, hold on a second. Do we need another light? Hold on a moment. I think we're gonna need it, yeah. Thanks for that, sorry about that. Here we go. Yeah, because the sun, yeah. We're going to, it's gone very dark out there, basically. I just really find this haunting. I mean, that's haunting. Easily could be in here. Um, what's that one by Fiona Horn? There's a deck by Fiona Horn that's gone out of my mind now. It's a rock pool deck. The magic of you or something like that. I love I love the images in that one as well. This that could have easily been here as well. I really, really love this deck. I used it quite a bit, I think all the way till January. I just kept using it because I loved it. And I think that, you know, um, yeah, so if if I'm using it for like two, three months, I think it has a good run for its money. Definitely a great investment for me anyway. And you know, sometimes I just use some of these cards as like auto cards or like a focus card um, for a reading and yeah I really really um, have enjoyed this deck so far so it's a deck that I see myself wandering through these woods wandering through these um, these images okay so this is a new deck the next one that I'm going to show you um, and this is one that I bought um, just a few months ago and I haven't really worked with it that much but I wanted to pull it out it is the Into the Into the Lonely Woods by Lucy Cavendish, artwork by Dan May. Um, now, this has got to be one of the most popular decks, I think, ever. I mean, I think, you know how they say it broke the internet? I think it broke Tarot Tube, how many people went and bought this deck. 
Um, if anybody's wondering, because it went through the roof, you know, it's demand. Um, I bought mine from Book Depository. They have it available, but it's really strange. They haven't changed the the square, the what is it called, the tile square, whatever it's called on the internet. That's where the image is placed. They haven't changed it, so it looks really weird. It, but it's there. It's Into the Lonely Woods. It's approximately 20 euros, so you can easily find it now. Um, and I bought mine from there. And um, so these are the backs, which I love it. This is, I think, the Datura, as in um, a moonflower. Um, and I really see myself in the lonely woods with this creature. Um, you know, everybody talks about the guidebook. I know it's going to be amazing. I still haven't worked with that, so I can't say more. But I just really love the images, you know. the I see myself wandering with this giant energy and thinking about life and the emo the emotions that it conjures up and our interaction with the world around us this deck is just amazing for it um you know i'm so glad it's available it's so just to mention if you're new this is a blue angel deck blue angel decks are mass market so you know it's very readily available and um and i just find it's 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 got this interplay of sorrow and joy together you know the two birds that fly together and um and for me that makes it so beautiful you know the it shows this creature enjoying moments it shows the creature sometimes very lonely and sad waiting sometimes with hope um looking for friendships um lost um there's a sadness you know um and yet you know it finds friends it it will, you know, this creature does find gifts coming in and new experiences and fun and curiosity there, you know. It just, it's a deck that, that expresses emotions so well, you know. And, and many people have talked about this deck being fantastic for inner child work. Um, I still need to investigate that because I really haven't gone into that guidebook. Um, I just really like it for its images. Um, and... I'm tempted also to try and get the other one, um, which is Dan May. I can't. I don't know who the author is. Is it Arwen Lynch, um, who's done the U? I think it's U.S. Games, who've also got a you know basically a very similar. I think it's called Gentle Creatures um, deck with with Dan May as the artist again. Um, so I'm very tempted to see, perhaps if that's of interest for me, or maybe next year. You know. So this is my bonus and I'm going to stop there, which has got to be Seasons of the Witch. I wanted one bonus in there. This is the Samhain Oracle. Um, and the reason why I put myself like I can see myself living in this deck is this deck is just fantastic for like if you're really into that very gritty, dark, witchy energy. I mean, this is this is quite morbid in some ways. I love it. Um, this is the size. The gilding is fabulous. Um, these are the backs. Uh, it is illustrated by Giada Rose and the author of course is Lorraine Anderson and Juliet Diaz now I know the series is there there's the Beltan version and then there's also the um, Yule Oracle I don't have either one of those I'm tempted to get the Beltan I don't know about the Yule yet I'm on the fence about it so <sighs> glossy cardstock but just a delight if you're in Europe right now Amazon NL are selling this for like 14 euros it's so affordable I absolutely love the artwork and I see myself in this deck and I can't describe it even though of course it's it's not photos or anything but <laughs> there's something about this deck that is just so really good in its witchy sense they got the witchiness so so right I don't know how else to put it it's really witchy I love it but it's dark witchy and um, yeah I mean you know you saw me with the the Halloween Oracle, and you saw me with the Salmon or um, Seasons of the Witch Oracle, and I find both of them are just, they've got that touch of like, you know, they really remind me of like some of the books I read growing up, which makes, I know a lot of you sit there thinking, what, what did she read while she was growing up? I read stuff where they were fairies who were also like evil in the forest, and kids were walking through, and that kind of thing. I just, yeah, I, you know, that stuff where you've got the, I think it's Brian Froud, you know, that, that kind of like troll, very English 
I mean, I'm born and raised in, in Northern England, so we, we have a lot of that kind of literature and sense of calling towards, you know, um, those realms that are like pre-Reformation, you know, really pre-Reformation period I'm looking at, like 13th, 12th century, um, which makes me feel like, yes, I'm back home again. And, um, and this deck really really gave me that and I absolutely love spiders by the way as well some of you know I'm a real spider girl so um, you know this deck just really has um, the touches of everything that really comes comes core to like I don't know a soul thing I don't know, I don't know how else to explain it um, so I'm gonna step I'm gonna stop step I'm gonna stop um, here with um, season of the witch sour and oracle sour and edition however you want to call it haunted absolutely perfect card for me to stop on Thank you for joining me today. Thank you again, Kyra, for this fantastic tag. Maybe I'll do a winter edition in the next few months. I'd love to actually do that. Anyway, so thank you again. Have a great weekend wherever you are. Take care now. Bye.